tell me how my socks have ended up all over the floor out of the laundry. You're a full-blown monster. Who do you think you are? Okay, hi. Lucy, leave him be. Hey guys, welcome back to a vlog. It has been a minute. I think my last video was my Pretty Little Thing haul, which was actually like a pre-recorded video. And then I got super sick and I uploaded it, but I haven't really filmed anything in at least like three weeks, two weeks. I don't know, it's been a minute. Plus all of my technical difficulties. I've been upgrading some of my equipment. I just got a brand new iMac. I'm just really, really happy that I can finally be back and creating some, I was gonna say quality content for you guys, but I don't know if we should um, call it that. We can just call it content. So I'm sitting here at my desk. This is kind of like my new little filming area. I finally cleaned it off. It was a whole disaster. Um, there's still like some random things on the side here that I just don't really have anywhere to put. We have on the agenda today, first and foremost, I wanna share a couple of new products with you guys that I've been loving. It's nothing too crazy, but I just wanna share them. I have a really, really, really sad, messed up story time update on my neighbor situation. And then I need to run to Ulta to grab a couple of things to um, revive my hair. <laughs> I have a couple of like new, I guess, products that I've been using. The first one is something that I, it was actually recommended to me by a few subscribers and I just kind of picked it up because I needed a new eye cream. Um, so I've been using this, the NARS Skin Total Replenishing Eye Cream. Let me see if this will focus for you guys. Yes, it will, amazing. So that's what it looks like. Just to show you guys the consistency, it's definitely a little bit of a thicker eye cream. So I've been using the It Cosmetics under eye cream uh, bye bye under eyes or comp no confidence in an eye cream that's what i've been using and it's great and i like to use that as a night cream but for whatever reason with the powders and the makeup that i have been using on my under eye area that cream just isn't like replenishing enough as a day cream. It's been working amazing. It smooths everything out. It keeps my under eyes nice and hydrated throughout the day. That's what I was trying to say about the It Cosmetics one. It just wasn't keeping my under eyes hydrated enough throughout the day under all of my concealers and powders and you know, all the things I put on my face. I'll look it up, I'll link it down below. And then also from NARS, I have been obsessed with this mascara. I bought the Benefit Better Than Sex mascara like a month ago and I was just not having it. I was not into it. So when I went to pick this up, I just asked like the girls at the NARS counter, though honestly, like do you guys have a really solid mascara that I could use? They used to be addicted to lash extensions. I need some volume, I need some length. And they recommended this one. This is their classic audacious mascara. And that's just what it looks like. It's got the red top. Very straightforward mascara. I love the way that the wand is though. And just to show you guys, I don't usually like these kinds of wands, but this is great. It gives great separation, no clumps. And there's actually two little like spiky things at the end of the wand. It's really hard to show you. Yeah, you won't be able to see it, but they're great for if you do get a little clumpiness going, you can go through and like break it up and separate it with the tip of the wand. So I really like this. That is what my lashes look like with it on. Super into it. Also guys, I'm sorry about my voice. I feel like I keep having like a little like <clears throat> raspiness because I get like really, really ill a couple times a year. Um, So like clearly we know who <laughs> won't be surviving the zombie apocalypse. Back to the products. <laughs> I've been loving this lipstick as well. Um, it's an Amplified by MAC. I've had this for a minute and I actually rediscovered it. I'm wearing it on my lips. Right now, this is definitely a like your lips but better type of shade for me. And like I said, it's an Amplified. It's half and half by MAC. That's what it looks like. It's just like a nice pinky nude. It's coming across a little bit darker on camera. I do like wearing lipstick in the daytime, but I don't like shades that make me look like overdone. So this is definitely a perfect shade for me for just everyday stuff. And currently on my eyes. Um, I'm really bad with eye makeup. <laughs> That's why I don't really wear it. Um, but the PR team at Laura Mercier were so kind and they sent me over the entire collection of these. And these are the Caviar Stick Eye Colors. So they are basically like eyeshadow colors in these little 
sticks and they sent me over the whole collection. I have at least 20 of them, I'm not even kidding. But these are just like my favorite ones that I have been using because I'm a very neutral gal, as I'm sure you guys know. But here, Sugar Frost, Rose Gold. Um, I also have Moonlight and these are more of like a shimmery finish. This is Moonlight just to show you guys quickly. You see how pretty that is? Oh my goodness. You go on a little bit creamier and then you can kind of like blend them out and then once they dry down, they are on there for the day. These are supposed to last 16 hours and like I've worn them all day and they definitely do. And then I have a couple of matte ones that I have been loving just for like my crease, for definition, that kind of thing. And I have caramel and eau naturel. I'll show you guys caramel so you can see the matte finish. So there you go. I kind of like blended this one out with my finger, um, Moonlight, but that's caramel. So the finish is just really nice. I'm super into these. They're very easy for me. I can literally just like draw them on and like pat, pat, pat with my finger and I'm good to go. That's about the extent of my eye makeup skills. So this was pretty much perfect. So thank you, Laura Mercier. That's it for the products. Um, I was going to do a little bag switch into my Palm Springs mini backpack from the bag I've been using, but I actually don't really feel like it. I think I'm just gonna stick with this bag. And so funny, like, I don't know guys, I just love this bag. Um, I got this as my new work bag. It's not like a super high-end designer or anything, but whoops. Okay, so I got this bag last week. Um, this is by Zadig and Voltaire. It's called the Rocky bag. So it's just this like slouchy, like multiple compartment bag and i just really like it it's just very easy to wear it has a little chain shoulder strap and it has like a longer one that i can wear cross body so that's always great and very useful for being hands-free so what's so interesting is like i'm kind of having a moment where <laughs> i'm i don't want to say i've like fully gone off of like overtly designer things but who oh no i think it's a combination of me just like not loving a lot of what is out right now and like a lot of what the trends are right now um i guess like in higher end fashion design things like that oh i don't know what it is but i just i haven't like i ordered a pair of chanel shoes from neiman marcus recently they're very classic um i bought a dior book coat pre-owned which should actually be here like tomorrow so maybe my next video will be like a reveal of that um but even those two were just like pieces that i had been going back and forth on for so long and i just finally like pulled the trigger on them because i'm just not really feeling anything else and then this was just kind of like an impulse buy like this bag goes for i think around like 400 dollars so you know it's definitely like a nicer leather bag but it's not like ridiculously expensive i got it in a friends and family sale 25 percent off so i was just like whatever you like you cannot go wrong um so i've been using that so funny like this always happens to me. This happens to me with my Gucci Marmont Hearts bag. So I actually broke this bag. Um, I Granted, I've worn this so heavily. I've had it for a year. I've worn it like crazy. Like I have taken this bag like through hell and back, okay? The little zipper pull broke off. I had to send it to get fixed and now it's back. I don't know what it is. Like after a bag sustains <laughs> that kind of damage or just like really any kind of weird damage like that. I don't know. I kind of go off of it even if it gets completely fixed and it's like back to normal like which this is. So I've been wanting to use her now that I have her back but I've just kind of been like ugh about it. Okay I'm going to show you guys my outfit now before I head out um, and before I get into this like crazy crazy story time that I'm going to be telling. My shoes are Adidas NMDs. They're like these kind of woven blue and purple ones. I love Adidas NMDs. I have a few pairs. These are like my go-to shoes. I don't think these look that great with these sweatpants, but what are you gonna do? And then my bag is the one I just showed you guys from Zidigan Voltaire, just easy, throw on and go. And then my jacket is from a little company called Palais the Brand. I don't know if you guys know it. This is a new release. It'll be on the website today, along with some new really comfy 100% cotton t-shirts and some little pullover sweaters that I'm obsessed with, or sweatshirts rather. So this is very cute. It's just a lightly distressed, lightweight denim jacket and detailing, very subtle. And I love the cut of it. This is actually modeled after an Eero jacket that I have that I love and have like worn to death. So this is in the same cut, more or less. It's a little bit boxier and it's longer at the front, goes up at the sides. It's a raw edge all around. I just love it. It's a really great fit. Um, I love a great denim jacket. So for Palais, I think I will always have a 
denim jacket in stock in rotation. I think I've mentioned this before, but we are ordering and having things made in very, very, very small quantities because we are a very small company. If you see something that you love, go ahead and grab it because we might sell out. And I don't always know if we will restock. So just a little tip there for shopping Palais. Okay. So I'm just changing locations for a second. <laughs> Felt really weird about talking about this. I wasn't actually going to, and I posted a little update on my Instagram story and the amount of people that DM'd me, I have like over a hundred DMs of people being like, please like discuss it. Please like let us know what happened. Um, you know, people who felt super involved in the situation. It must've been like a month ago. I posted a video on my YouTube channel um, talking about my crazy neighbor situations, but I think most of you will know. So long story short, um, this like super weird guy that lives across the hall, so there is this woman living with him next door and she would shout and scream and there was a child in there with her at some point that she would be shouting at and like, it was just horrible. Um, again, if you watch the video, link down below, there's footage of her screaming. She was just a very, very intense person. The energy on our floor, everything was just, we were always on edge because there were even some instances where it sounded like somebody was being murdered. We were always having to call the police. The police would come, they would go quiet, like just a whole mess. So that all happened, um, things quieted down and then she came Came back um, I don't know where she went she was gone for a couple of days and then she came back so he works really weird hours he is a line chef at a hotel up in Fort Lauderdale so he would be gone like up until pretty late in the evening and come back so it would mostly just be her that we would hear and then this child child disappeared let me just say that I don't know if that was actually her child I don't know whose child it was but the child has been eliminated from the equation um, the second time that she came back. Dreaming would go on and on and it. one night I went on Instagram Live essentially, she had a fit, she grabbed all of her stuff and she was like out in the curb, <laughs> like on a nice quiet street in Bay Harbor Islands, just shouting. She had like six Ubers cancel on her because you know, this woman was like clearly on drugs. I'll get into that in a second. So she was calling other people to get her Ubers. They kept leaving her and she came back. So after that night, things got even worse. We would go to the laundry room or the trash chute, which is on crazy people's end of the hallway. And the smells that were coming out of their unit, you guys, like, listen, <laughs> we all know what weed smells like, all right? There was something, I have my guesses as to what it was, um, but there was something being smoked over there that was not marijuana and it, the smell was just like permeating through into the hallway, into the laundry room. Like it was just really bad and really, really just fucking weird. I think it was the night that she was out on the curb freaking out. Um, you know, the HOA people were like keeping tabs on it and like documenting the whole situation. Our HOA board president, this is so messy of him. He airdropped us all of the police call logs, the reports and all of that. Um, you know, basically saying like, well, it's public record. So here you guys go, just so you're a little more looped in considering it's happening like right next door to you. And her full name, um, we were able to Google her. I pulled up some like 12 mug shots that this woman has been arrested for between Las Vegas, Arizona, and Florida, um, all for possession of illicit substances. It just, I don't know. And more information on her, including a LinkedIn page advertising her prostitution services, her websites, and all of her hourly rates and things. And I'm not judging anybody who escorts or who chooses to do that as their profession, their job. Um, I've known several people who have done it. It is what it is like, live your life. Um, but when you're causing a ruckus and acting crazy and all of that stuff, like that's more so what I have a problem with when you are, you know, doing drugs in your condo next door to me with a child in there. That's more what I have a problem with. Like I just really, you know, had had it with this woman. You guys found her Twitter. Um, there are all kinds of like creepy videos of her like lurking around outside of being like condo hunting in Miami. And it's like, sis, you're actually squatting in my building. She was making all these weird videos, shading people the building i'm sure some of it was from tony and i because we had a few like not so nice encounters with her so she finally back to vegas as per her twitter so we were just like oh it's done it's over with now this is where it gets kind of crazy the day before yesterday i heard the door slam from the unit and i heard a woman yelling and 
Now, looking back, yes, it was 100% her. I was sitting here, I had some music on, I just vaguely heard it, and I was just like, there's no way. But then I took a step back and I was like, girl, you're paranoid, like, why would she be back? So yesterday, Tony and I were both off of work, so we slept in, we were just like, living life, whatever, and I took the dogs down around like 9 o'clock in the morning, just did my little walk around the block, came back, the halls were quiet, it was super quiet in the building, like, everything seemed fine. As soon as I get in the elevator and turn around, you can kind of like see a little bit of like the driveway and like the front little like um, roundabout thing in our building. I see some police cars pull up, but I don't think anything of it. I'm like, all right, I gotta take the dogs upstairs. Like they're gonna bark at the police officers. So let me just like mind my own and like go upstairs, you know? He'd heard some stuff in the hallway, but you know, people live on our floor, like that's fine, <laughs> obviously. There's gonna be noise. So Tony goes downstairs to get the mail and he sees a bunch of police officers. He sees a coroner's vehicle in our front driveway. Um, CSI crime scene investigation pulls up and the HOA president and one of the other HOA board members are in the office like reviewing security footage and you know, tapes and all of that. In the mail room, they gave him a look and he just walked over and was like, hey, like, what's going on? It's really horrible, guys. Um, come to find out, the guy that lives next door, he still had been living there. This lady had also come back and they were actually just being very, very quiet and very secretive. He woke up yesterday morning and found her overdosed and, you know, passed away in his bed. So, yeah, that is the very, very, very sad end to the story. Um, again, like I, I feel very weird about the fact that you know the police were called so many times um, about these domestic disturbances. This woman was clearly on drugs. Like every time that I saw her, mind you, like yes, I have known several people very close to me that have had problems with substance abuse, so maybe I know what to look for. But anyway, like this woman was clearly on something. I would imagine that every time the police would arrive, like they would also notice that she was not in her right mind and nothing was done. Even you guys, when I would give you the updates on it on Instagram, were just like, I don't understand why nothing is being done. Like this is crazy. And I agree, it is completely crazy and it's very sad that it ended like this but it has ended somewhat the whole thing that everyone has basically come to the conclusion of is that the guy that lives across the hall from us was basically her pimp and a drug dealer i would not be surprised if he had something to do with her situation he was incredibly calm through the entire process like he's right there like the police were questioning him in the hallway and like we heard most of it and he was just way 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 too calm for somebody that a just found not only a dead body but you know their friend of like x amount of years i had a really really creepy interaction with him last night i had driven to the apple store last night to pick up my imac i'll like hobble into the elevator with all my things um and the elevator door opens and it's him like he's right there and he like rushes out like about to smoke a cigarette i'm looking at the ground because i'm already like oh hell no i'm not today jesus he's like oh hi I literally just go like oh hey and i like shuffle into the elevator and mind you he's already out of the elevator i can't see him i'm like going to go push my button and he's like did you hear about what happened last night and i froze like i didn't know what to say i was just like oh yeah that was horrible um and i start like pushing the button like clearly not trying to like really interact with this man at all and he puts his hand in the elevator makes it open back up and then sticks like half of his body in the elevator and starts trying to talk to me about the whole situation and is essentially just like yeah, like you know i don't know what happened she was super pissed off last night and she was freaking out and i guess somebody brought her something and then that was it she was just gone in the morning i'm just like wow yeah that's horrible it's like i don't even know what happened like it's just so sad so horrible you know i didn't expect this like i'm so sorry to have brought that into the building and this and that i was like okay yeah like you're fine have a good night what the I, this was a lot longer than i thought it was going to be but um i guess there was a lot left to explain so this is going to be quite a lengthy vlog but for everybody who wanted the details and wanted to know what happened um this is as far as i know that is the final chapter although i shouldn't say final chapter because this weirdo is still living next to us oh my god it's so hot out okay i just dropped off my pretty little thing order and i'm gonna go to ulta now to go get some shampoo because my hair is fried and frazzled. Yo, I do not. Time I turn this damn camera on and I have like a little um, like tripod handheld thing now. I swear people everywhere, like the whole world pulls up around me and it's like, what is she doing? Um, so yeah, what I was trying to say 
is that I'm going to Ulta now to get some kind of a like repairing mask or conditioner because I'm full on out of shampoo and conditioner. I need to wash my hair tomorrow. I feel like I have a lot of product buildup in my hair. So yeah, I'm gonna get a clarifying one for my roots and then I need like some conditioning help on my ends. I just realized I don't think oh, I ever showed you guys my phone case. I was actually really happy because Trisha Venus has the same one in white and then I saw it on her vlog and I was like, oh my God, it's gigantic but I just love it. <laughs> so, my little Ulta haul, guys. This AC is always so freaking loud. Sorry, um, my car's really dirty. Oh, hey, Pally, the brand, what's up? This is the shampoo I ended up getting. Clean Reset. Um, I just thought this would be good to like kind of balance out my hair and whatever. But then I also got this conditioner, and this is just the Ultra Hydra sor Source. I cannot talk today. Um, Cause I never really put conditioner on my roots and my ends are so dry, so that's great. And then I got a little wet comb, a wet or dry detangling comb. Um, I don't like to use actual brushes on my hair. I feel like it breaks my hair a lot, so I got that. And then I got like the saddest little thing. Um, I got this to try, the Purology Color Fanatic Mask. I'm gonna buy the whole thing, but they're really expensive. Like a lot of people told me to get Purology, but you guys, is it even that amazing? Cause all their stuff is really expensive and I've never tried it. So it's kind of like, mm, get this mini size and give it a try. And if it's amazing, I will get the full size. So I'm actually really freaking hungry right now and I'm craving something. I bet you guys will never guess where I'm going, so stay tuned for that. I have a keto regret right now to share with all of you. I drove by a Red Lobster and I'm really, really, really sad that I never got to eat there and try their cheddar biscuits that everyone's always talking about. Apparently they're amazing. I just feel like I didn't get to eat enough trash before I went keto. Sake, I only had Popeyes for the first time, like this time last year. It's okay because I went to McDonald's and I still got a keto option. I am addicted to eating trash. I was absolutely a possum in a past life. It slid around in the little dish and now it just looks super unappetizing. Diet Coke is fine on keto as well, guys. I'm telling you, I don't actually really like how it tastes, but like um, I can't have actual Coke. Mmm. Okay, I'm gonna eat this deconstructed burger. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have made it this far and to the end of the vlog, you are a real one. You're a real one. Subscribe. I upload videos on Mondays and Thursdays. I'm back to my schedule. I know I've been kind of all over the place with it. Anyway, I will see you guys in Monday's video. Have a great day or night or whatever. Whenever you see this, bye.